as he appeared every evening, intoning his statements on the progress of the conflict and the latest casualty figures. I have two statements, gentlemen, um, both operational statements. He had this large glasses, which were described as Eric Morecambe-like, and black curly hair, and always, of course, a collar and tie, immaculately dressed. He, just, he looked like a typical civil servant would look like in those days. At the time of the Falklands War, Ian Mather was the defence correspondent of The Observer. He travelled to Argentina, where he was promptly imprisoned as a spy and spent the rest of the war in a cell. I discovered that around 2 a.m. I could pick up on a BBC World Service uh, broadcast. So uh, by poking the aerial out of the window through the bars in the prison cell, and in this way I, I heard... Uh, Ian MacDonald's voice coming over the airwaves in the middle of the night. This disembodied voice, rather ghostly. The Argentine Air Force has launched a number of attacks this morning against our ships in San Carlos water. Several waves of Mirage and Skyhawk aircraft were engaged by sea harriers on combat air patrol he said that he, he knew he was going to have to announce bad news from time to time because this was a war. And so he decided to do everything completely factually and unemotionally. First reports indicate that some damage may have been sustained by ships in San Carlos waters, but we have no details at present. He was aware, of course, that, the, that people were hanging on his every word because the he was the only official means of communication from the, about the Falklands War because the MOD controlled all communications. We had a lot of other sources going on, but the reliable one was Ian MacDonald. Revel Barker, the defence correspondent of the Daily Mirror, was covering the war in London and attended many of Ian MacDonald's briefings. Many of the sources contradicted each other. There was the Navy who didn't seem to tell anybody, including the Ministry of Defence, anything. There was GCHQ, which seemed at odds with the Department of the Foreign Office. There was Downing Street, and so on. And we were get, getting different lines from each of them, often contradictory. The reliable one was Ian. At 12.30 London time this morning, two sea harriers on patrol well within the total exclusion zone around the Falkland Islands, sighted an Argentine fishing vessel. Keith Waterhouse, the columnist and dramatist, described him as the speaking cock, and also, perhaps more memorably, as the first man to speak in Braille. But Ian's point was, that he was, speak he was addressing maybe a hundred or more journalists, many of them foreign, including Argentinian, of course, and he wanted to speak at shorthand speed, and he wanted there to be no doubt at all about what he was saying, which is why I think he seemed to cut out all the adjectives and stick to the, the clear facts. The Sea Harriers therefore opened fire. He was in an absolutely crucial position, and he was certainly aware of that, and he was certainly aware of the fact that lives were being lost, and, and there were many anxious families. Sorry to interrupt John Curl there, but we've just heard from the Ministry of Defence in London that they have a new statement on the Falklands crisis. We're going over there now. In the course of its duties, within the total exclusion zone around the Falkland Islands, HMS Sheffield attacked 42 destroyer was attacked and hit late this afternoon by an Argentine missile. The worst one, I think, and I think it had the most profound effect on him, was the, the fire on board HMS Sheffield, where a lot of people were seriously injured. The ship caught fire, which spread out of control. When there was no longer any hope of saving the ship, the ship's company abandoned ship. All who abandoned her were picked up. 
It is feared that there have been a number of casualties. And he announced it and paused and sort of looked around and said, it's important that we get the information to the relatives first. But I think you could see the anguish in his eyes in having to report it. He was so determined to avoid saying no comment, he, it was a bit of a game that he played, that instead he would reply with a quote, usually from Shakespeare. And the quotation I would like to leave with you in that context, if I may, is from Hamlet. And the problem was in those days, there was no Google, no mobile phones, and so we didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, on this uh, particular occasion, when uh, I asked him to explain what was going on, none of us had any idea when he replied, Hamlet, scene 1, act 2, line 215, until we landed, whereupon we scrambled to the phones and got on to our newspaper libraries, and they uh, uh, explained this was when Hamlet's father's ghost appeared, and Hamlet asked if he'd answered the question, and... Uh, was told answer made it none. In other words, that was his way of getting, Ian's way of getting round uh, saying no comment. He knew you could trust him, and I think the public got that impression straight away. And it may have been because of his almost funereal speech, but the point is, it was a war, and it was a serious thing. It wasn't. He wasn't Lord Hawthorne. He was giving only information that was right. He did attract quite a following in a strange kind of way. I, I was told that afterwards he got lots of fan mail. And there was even a stalker, a lady who followed him around <laughs> on the tube. He came round to our house in North London once or twice. My wife and I went round to his flat in Hampstead, I think, once or twice for dinner. And I know he was a, he was a good cook. He, he cooked quail. I remember standing in his pinafore and going backwards and forwards to the kitchen, a very nervous, nervous cook, but he was very beautiful. <laughs> Act 3, scene 4, lines 53 and 54. It would be immodest of me to go further in the 55, 56 lines. So if I can leave that quotation with you, I hope so. <laughs> the voice of Ian MacDonald, who's died aged 82. Now, Edda Tassienka provided an invaluable resource.